Hello everyone, welcome back. This is Easy Learn AI. In this video, we will learn about different types of gradient descent. Batch gradient descent, stochastic gradient descent, and mini batch gradient descent. As briefly mentioned in the gradient descent video, there is one unavoidable issue in neural network training, which is the local minima problem. The local minima problem occurs when, during the learning process, the model gets stuck at a local minimum of the loss function instead of reaching the global minimum. Although there is no complete solution for the local minima problem, deep learning researchers have developed various methods to mitigate it. Today, we will focus on data scheduling for training. Data scheduling can be understood in the following way. Imagine you have foods you like, and foods you like less like veggie or something. Would you eat the parts you like first, or the parts you like less first? Some people eat the less liked foods first and say, I want to get rid of the less liked foods first, so that I can savor the good taste at the end. Others eat the liked foods first and say, I want to enjoy the good taste before I get too full. Even though the total amount of food eaten is the same, the order can affect the level of satisfaction. Similarly, the order in which you feed data to a neural network can change the result. This is the concept behind stochastic gradient descent. To explain stochastic gradient descent more easily, let's assume the following situation. The yellow points on the graph are the actual measured data. We start with an initial straight line and we want to find the best slope that explains the given data points. This is a regression model. Our initial condition is as follows, and we will use the mean squared error as the loss function. Using this formula, we can calculate the predicted values like this, and the loss can also be calculated like this. Using gradient descent, we can update the slope of the line like this. By applying the chain rule, the formula becomes as follows, and the partial derivative of this part becomes like this, and this part simply follows from partial differentiation. And if we plug in the numbers, we can calculate it as follows. If we assume the learning rate is 0.01, .01, then the new w becomes 0.343. Up to this point, it doesn't seem any different from a typical gradient descent. But what we want to focus on today is not the algorithm itself, but how we use data in the calculation. Notice that to calculate the gradient once, we used all the data points. This method of using all the data points once to update the neural network weights is called batch gradient descent. As you can see, batch gradient descent uses all the data points for a single weight update calculation it has the advantage of being able to update the weights in a very stable manner. But what if we have too much data? Calculating errors for all data points for each weight update seems very inefficient. Instead, we can calculate the error for just one data point, update the weight, then calculate the error for another data point, and update the weight again. This method of calculating errors for each data point and updating the weights is called stochastic gradient descent. Returning to the example we discussed earlier, up to this point, the process is the same as batch gradient descent. But from here, we randomly select just one data point for calculation. The new w becomes 0 0.272. Now we use this new w for further calculations. We substitute the new w and calculate again. We can get a new w. By calculating the error for each individual data point, stochastic gradient descent is more efficient than calculating for the entire data set at once. Although stochastic gradient descent is an efficient method, it is sensitive to each individual data point when updating the weights, which increases the likelihood of getting stuck in local minima. On the other hand, batch gradient descent considers all data points for each weight update making it more stable and less prone to local minima compared to stochastic gradient descent. So, is there a method 
that combines the efficiency of stochastic gradient descent with the stability of batch gradient descent? Yes, that's mini batch gradient descent. Mini batch gradient descent uses a set number of data points called a mini batch for each weight update. For example, we randomly select five data points, calculate the average error for these five, and update the gradient using this average error. Then we randomly select another five data points. We use the average error of these five points to update the weights again. By using a specific number of data points for weight updates compared to stochastic gradient descent, which updates the weights using only one data point, this method is more stable. This method is also more efficient than batch gradient descent, which updates the weights using all the data at once. Returning to the example we discussed earlier, up to this point, the process is the same as batch gradient descent. In the case of mini batch gradient descent, n equals 2, we use two data points for each calculation. This way, the new weights are updated. It updates the weights by using two data points at a time. Now let's see how to implement each gradient descent method in code. The following code is an example of batch gradient descent. Let's use the same data set to explain again. Since it's batch gradient descent, all predicted values go into y hat. As we saw earlier, we multiply all x values by y minus y hat, then multiply by negative 2, find the average, multiply by the learning rate, and subtract it from the existing weight to get a new weight. This code faithfully implements the batch gradient descent formula we just discussed. The following code is for stochastic gradient descent. As you can see, it only uses one data point for calculating the gradient and updating the weight. Except for using just one data point, the weight update process is the same. This is the code for mini batch gradient descent. Notice this part here, where only a batch sized portion of the data is selected for weight updates. The part where we select the data used for weight updates is the only difference. Everything else is the same as before. That's all for today's video on stochastic gradient descent. The term stochastic gradient descent may sound complicated, but it's actually not that difficult and is easy to understand. I hope it helps in your deep learning studies. Thank you for watching today's video, and I wish you great success in your research and learning journey.